thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, I think let's put our hands together again for the awesome entertainment, Fiona. Magnificent. Alright guys, um, firstly welcome and thank you so much for turning out on behalf of Crystal and Kiko and the rest of the family and there's a lot of them. Um, thank you so much for coming and showing your support. Um, I was sitting outside having my electronic cigarette which is a little bit different from the other side of the mountain and I don't have the skills you guys do with the Israelis and that. And um, I was looking around, looking at the crowd and thinking to myself, jeepers, I don't know if this is out of my comfort zone. So I do apologize if I come across as a bit southern suburbsy for you guys and I do apologize for that in advance. But uh, Crystal has asked me just to facilitate a bit of a, a simple process which I think is important for all of us here that are here supporting to give a bit of a background of what this book is all about and I'm sure she's going to share some incredible insights. Um, and again, I'm quite amazed at the turnout. She's got a lot of friends, okay? And a lot of friends you could obviously, yeah, she does, she's got a lot of friends. And, um, and quite a good looking mod at that, I might say. And, um, and over and above that, so many of you can read. That's amazing that all of you are here. You have that skill set. That's incredible. And, um, and let's be honest, it's easier to support her here and buy a book than buy a house. So, um, so thank you for that. Um, so please do support her. This is your chance. You say, but I bought your book. I bought your book. Don't sell me a house. Um, but guys, important that we keep this this conversation between you guys as well as us here, we can, we're going to use some questions to lead her into the things she needs to, to talk about. I mean, she, she wrote 330 pages for this moment, so let's give her that, that moment to share and ask all the questions you want to ask and get those out the way. I'm a bit worried about handing the mic over to her. Her hand is incredibly tight from all the signing, but she will be there afterwards um, for you guys to make your purchase and obviously personalize her signatures. But the other person I want to give a shout out today is the incredibly brave, courageous, um, and by this stage incredibly hot and sweaty frog at the back there. Yeah. Yes, this is one of Crystal's frogs. Okay, He was a tadpole before they kissed many moons ago. I like to call it the PK uh, phase, the uh, uh, pre-Kiko phase of her life. Um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, but as I say, please hold your questions for the end because we are going to open it up to the floor and we hope we can have a lot of fun with this. Um, make sure that you keep your glasses charged. We will not be offended if you get up and go to the bar to get a drink. That is also very much part of what we're doing here today. So, she is particularly nervous, but we all know that she's going to enjoy it once she gets into it. So let's keep encouraging her, let's laugh even if it's not funny, and let's make her feel comfortable. So, without further ado, Crystal. Yes, the, the first question I want to ask, which is the one that's probably on the top of all our minds, the first thing we're going to ask is, what the hell inspired you or, or got into you to make you want to write a book? Hi, everybody. Hi. Why are you naked? <laughs> okay, so it is a question that I think I've got the answer to at this stage. Um, I wasn't sure at the time. I sort of just, um, yeah, it was a process. I went to Mary Ann's house one night. I'm very happy in my career. This isn't my full-time job. This is my part-time job. All your estate agents are at camp. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, she pulled. The, she had this guidance card set, and she to pull a card. So I did, and I got the creativity one. I'm like, oh gosh, that's like saying drink more water. Okay. So she said pull another one, and I pulled one, and it said write. And I was like, right. And I read, and it said this is your life purpose. I was like, okay, <laughs> all right, the cards are spoken. Are you just laughing? No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> encouraging, encouraging. <laughs> so anyway, so I went, I went home that night, pulled out my computer, and I wrote the first seven pages of my book, titled Happily Divorced at that stage. And I didn't know where I was going or what I was doing, and in the morning I read it, and I read it to a few friends, and they said, that's amazing, and I realized that there's actually a book that's wanting to come out of me. So that's, where, that's what happened. Um, and the next question that we've got for you here is, um, tell us a little bit about that process. You spoke about that, obviously support of family and friends is important, but talk us through a little bit around the process. How long did this take you? Um, and, and were there times where sort of the process accelerated itself, slowed down, times you wanted to give up, times that, uh, that, that were difficult? Okay, thank you. Um, so I never wanted to give up. I don't know why, it was like blind passion. I think it was like the calling. I, I really think that this book was downloaded through me. I think it sounds crazy, but I mean, why do you write a book? I still don't know. 
Um, so the process was, I had read something, I'd been fascinated with writers, always, I was like, how the hell do you do that, that must be so difficult, and it's actually more difficult than I thought, just to put it out there, and yeah, so I, I where was I? <laughs> Def definitely didn't give up, but... Oh yes, okay, so I read somewhere that Stephen King had said if you want to write a book, you have to do it every day until it's out, so I never stopped, and it took me four and a half months. But the, the um, editing actually took me four years. I started in 2014, September. <laughs> September. More mic. More mic. You okay. need to call it violets. Okay. <laughs> right. Pretend it's a frog. Yeah. That's beautiful. Okay. So yeah. So it took four. It took um, four four years of the edit, and an amazing mentor who's here tonight, Efka. Efka, where are you? One day I was walking and Raymond was in the forest, I mean the forest, it wasn't the forest, we were walking in the cabin and I saw Raymond and I was like, I'm writing this book and he's like, that's amazing, my wife's just written the book and I'm like, she has? Maybe she can help you and that became a journey. Now the full circle is that EFCO is actually my course of teacher at school and it's an English book. <laughs> and I met with her for two years, every day, and we rewrote this book. And every Friday and we became so tight and it is amazing and the interesting thing is that there was sharing that went on because I think the subject matter is very relatable it doesn't matter um, where you're from or what your background is we would share stories and I'm, it just became a journey and I am so grateful to you Efka you really I mean thank you from, from me to you Before we get into too much into a little bit more of the detail of the book and, and, and a little bit around what we can expect um, tell us a little bit around the publishing part, it's one that fascinates me as well. What, what's the standard fund, what's it all about? Um, yeah. Give us a little bit of insight there. Okay, so I think, I do like in have, um, writing a book to having a third child. Um, it really felt like that, it was like the beginning, that I was, it was immaculate conception for sure. I don't know how that came about, like Virgin Mary, I suddenly had this thing. And then it was a long four and a half months pre month pregnancy. Yeah. And then the, the, thunder, yeah. the thunder fun thing was, I'll get into it, but it was like the last trimester, which made me very vulnerable. And I felt very exposed, asking, like just weepy and, and sad. And then suddenly this book was here. And here's my baby shower, so thank you all for coming. <laughs> very, very grateful. <laughs> and sorry, again, the question. I've, I've, that was I've, the question. <laughs> the thunder fun. Okay. So, so the, publishing, the publishing side of things was, um, firstly, so then it got professionally edited. So Ifka and I managed to get it into a readable format. Because when I first gave my seven pages to someone, they're like, every single sentence begins with I. And I'm like, okay. So all I had was a concept. So she helped me. I'd sit with Efka and I'd go, Efka, what is this? She's like, no, that's shit. No one's going to understand that. You know what you're talking about, but no one else does. So we, so we rewrote it into a user-friendly package. And then, and then it went off. Then I found an editor who I forgot to invite tonight. <laughs> My bad. I'm sorry. I mean, I'll, 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 yeah. Okay, we'll forget about that. Not the part. And she did an amazing job. And she turned this and gave it. Uh, she turned the whole book. She's actually a San Susie teacher, English teacher this time. And she turned the whole thing around. She put it in first person. And she, oh, it's amazing. Like, I mean, I'm not going about the book. I'm just amazing what she did with my eye, 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 eye. And then, and then it went. And then the the publishing thing came about. And I was like, I said, I was like, everyone's going to want this. This is amazing. I've written a book. Do you know who I am? And I sent it away, and I got so much rejection. Rejection after rejection after rejection after rejection. Wow. If you think property is bad, try putting your life story out there. They're not rejecting the house. They're rejecting you and your story. So it was like a, it was a vulnerable thing. But I got over that. I was like, you know what? You just, I just haven't found the right path. So um, after the, all the rejection, and I had very positive, like it doesn't mean that this book isn't worth merit, just that we're not the right publishers, and the truth is traditional publishers aren't exactly looking for first time authors, so why take a chance on them? So eventually this amazing thing happened, and I got a pitch to publish with Jakarta Publishers, and it was a, I won a competition out of a thousand, and there were 20 people. And it was a trip, we had to go to Joburg and present in front of exclusive books, Sunday Times, we were the others, Jakarta Publishers and Guardian Mail, Mail Guardian. And I was like, Marianne, or we're going to Joburg. And I bought tickets, and I'm like, this is it, I'm getting my publishing deal. And I, I blindly, and I bought a new suitcase, and off we went. <laughs> and we marched in there, 
And I was up first because I asked him. I didn't know if I might trip back to Cape Town. I said, I want to go in first because I don't want to know what happens. I'm very competitive. And I walked into this beautiful presentation, all prepared. And she stopped me halfway and she said, I'm telling you right now, we're not publishing your book. And I'm like, but this isn't what I planned. I had to plan this. I'm here. And she said, she said, no, you don't need us. You don't need us. You are too dynamic. You've come too far. You've put too much money in. You've put too much effort in. You can do this on yourself, by yourself. We're looking for someone at the infant stages. You beyond that. Come with me. And I said, one of you are coming out there and telling my sisters that I come to Joburg that I didn't fail. <laughs> 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 that I actually, that I, this is a stood apart. I said, no, no, it is. Your book has got great merit, but you just don't need me. So, so I took, so I don't know who it was. Someone came out and told them. And it, I was glad they did because they had to remind me that I hadn't failed. And I was like, you haven't failed. This is good. This is good. <laughs> so anyway, so they took me to, I said, so they took me right now back then to staging post, which is all the self-publishing. And she put me in touch with someone. I'm like, Okay, this is good. It's, I can do this. At least I can say I've got a path now. And then I got home and they sent me the quote and it was 70,000 Rand. And I was like, okay. And I started looking at budget quotes <laughs> and they're just 18,000 Rand. And I was like, five years, 18. And I thought, you know what, let me just launch this Thunder Fund and just see where it goes. And it was that, I think that was the birth of the, the book, really, because that is when people were I was feeling exposed, it was vulnerable. It was daunting, and, and it was out there, but I was getting support, and at that stage, I, I phoned my mom. Mom, you didn't even advertise on your page. If you don't support me, who is? And crying, where have you? She said, I'm sorry, I just don't know how to use social media. Tell me I'll do anything. <laughs> so, so, she did, so then it, it got launched, and I raised quite a big chunk, and I'm so grateful to all of you guys that supported me. Um, not then, but now as well, but your books are all here in a packet with a big, big love packed inside. Thank you. So that, that got me off the ground. And then, um, the re so then I was concerned that I was going to sit with two garages full of books. I've self-published now, yay. <laughs> and they actually gave me a distribution contract, meaning that the work was good enough. And guess what? It's in 40 bookshops. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's awesome. And I think that, that part of the story is, is, is something that's so exciting about putting your mind to something and going and executing it. And I think, um, just so we all know, our, our books that we need to buy and support and everything else that goes along with it, we've got 18 grand to claw back, so, so let's get on it. And uh, more... <laughs> okay, something like that. So, so I think um, the, the, the next thing on the agenda here is to talk a little bit around um, what this book is about. We, we're looking for top line in a nutshell. You don't have to read the whole thing to us today. But also importantly, who does, who does this appeal to? Because for me as a, as, a, as, a, as a fellow, I don't know if I want to be seen on the beach reading this. It will look a bit weird. Um, but who, who does this speak to and, and what is it all about? Okay, so I still haven't really got the elevator pitch on this because... You're supposed to have one as an author. If someone asks you in the elevator, what is your book? You've got one sentence. And, and it just sounded too contrived. So I'll give you, and it's the backstory. It's basically the last 20, 20 years. Okay, so the last relationships I've had in, the, in, in, the, over my, in my adult life, and it's a significant one. And there was a definite progression between where I was in my relationship, my abusive relationship. So it, actually it's not all humor, although the, the fun cover does. It does visit. Um, the abusive relationship, and then there's the rebound relationship, and then there's the yo-yo relationship, which is um, the, frog know, guy. the frog guy. The frog guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the one that loved me to. I went through every single relationship, which was a journey, and only when I met my most amazing prince, Kiko, where are you? Amazing guy. Yeah. My prince. He yeah. should have yeah. yeah. He didn't want to wear a crown, but he really should have, because when I had this true soulful life, love, I realized. Oh my God, those were love. I was filling in the potential. Oh my God, that's not, and I kept thinking that I could change them, and I th kept thinking that I could change, and I kept selling myself short. When I had my baby, it'll change. And after this, I was like, oh, this, this, is, this is what it's about, and this needs to be shared. People need to know this, because if I picked up this book when I was going through one of those relationships, I think it might have given me the insight to maybe make a difference, and that is what I think it is about. And yeah, and it is, it is, it's really, I think it's, it's touched, although it's, there is issues like abuse and all that stuff, it's also got humor in, 
because he the hell wants to read is a sad story. <laughs> and um, yeah, and I think it's a fun read and people that have read it have definitely said they can't put it down. We've, it's 330 pages, but they read it in two days, which is like music to my ears, <laughs> let's face it. <laughs> That's awesome. And I, and I think the other thing is, you know, re remember that old frog man at the back there, please grab a picture with him yeah. and tag, uh, tag the book uh, Lessons from the Frogs I've Kissed on that as well and maybe the hashtag kiss a frog or something like that as well because obviously this whole, this whole uh, social media space in which we live, we are creating a brand here, we're not just selling books so let's just uh, support that as much as possible as well. But going back to the who does this appeal to, as you say, a lot of this vulnerability that you're willing to share with everyone and not just your friends um, but also to the, 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 the great world, so to speak, um, takes a lot of courage. Tell me a little bit around um, the feelings around that. Um, a lot of times we are told to journal a lot of our feelings and a lot of our relationships and a lot of the things that we've been through, but then to go and sh share that on the most public of all platforms. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, you actually said something when we were talking. You said that people are too scared to show their vulnerability, and we live in a very superficial world where it's all about social media and what it looks like, and no one's no one's real enough to be real anymore. And this is what it is. It is complete vulnerability. Um, I think I don't know if you're all gonna look at me in the same way after you've read it. Um, please just try and see where it's come from. Like it is oversharing sometimes, cringeworthy oversharing. But I think if I wasn't authentic, people wouldn't get the message. And I had to sort of take one for the team and stand there naked, not literally, um, so you, so people could actually feel safe and realize, like, she looks like she's got her stuff together, but she's actually as broken and as scared and as damaged and as, 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 as all of us. And I think that it's just a matter of, like, just being, sharing. It's like the Me Too. We have to, it happened, it happens. We're not all perfect anymore. And I, and I think that social media has got a lot to answer for in that way. 100%. And I think that vulnerability is obviously the thing that a lot of people are going to connect with. And, I, and with, with that vulnerability and connectivity, obviously, there's impact within your, your inner circle, your family and, and your friends and your loved ones. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so my fa my family were um, some of them were a little bit surprised that I was writing a book. I think some I've got a big family, so it is some some some. Some of them were very supportive, and I think some of them were in denial for four and a half years until it actually landed up on the shelves, and it's okay. Um, Kiko, my darling husband, has been incredible. He has not read the book. He did say while I was writing it he would when it's published. I don't think he is going to, but he. It's, but I don't blame him. Thank you. And it's and he stood by me and he knew that I was writing about all these exes. And when I wrote about the exes, funny things were happening. I was being supported in the process. So when I was writing about one of the frogs, suddenly I'd have a client that looked like a frog. He reminded me of him. He was bald like him. He had the same humor. He came from Pretoria, and I was like, okay, universe, I get this. And then I'd like write and remember about it. And then the funny things started happening in the edit as well. So if I was writing about a jealousy thing, I knew. Somebody's going to come up and it's going to make me jealous. And even in my current, I was like, oh God, I'm going to have to go through that again. And I waited and I'm sure it's, I, re I really, really did. So Kiko is really like, he, it, he's let me expose our relationship because let me tell you, the happy relationships are the hardest. It's not all like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is where the real work happens. This is where you're facing your partner and you are like, trying to be a better person and trying to grow and trying to not make those mistakes that you've made along the way. And the one thing I notice is like, yeah, yeah I think that that's, that's good. <laughs> Buy the book to find out more. Um, <clears throat> Guys, I'm, I'm, I'm going to open it up. I, I will continue to ask questions if that's what's reply, uh, required. But uh, are there any particular questions that would like to be thrown at us? We just need one brave person to start this process. There we go. I actually, sorry, it's a little bit less about the book and more about the process. But I'm just so curious how the Thunder Fund thing worked out and how, and, and how, how it worked, how you did it. How I did it. Yeah, okay. and, and, and how successful it was. Thank you, Mark. Um, so the Thunder Fund was, I was at the same as writing a book and publishing a book, I had no idea what it was, but I had a friend, Verity, who had launched a CD uh, before social media 
before anything and she had she had no platform and I thought if she could do it, she sold two thousand copies of a CD before it was printed, before it was published. I mean, what is it? I don't know. Produced. What is, okay, records produced, books published. Okay, got it. So and if she could do it with all the platforms that I got, I definitely could do it. So Kiko made me a nice video, thank you, and I set up a, a Thunderfun thing and I threw myself in the deep end and I was pre-selling this book. I wanted people to know it wasn't donations, it was pre-sales, you will get your book. And um, it was an amazing experience, except it's a good question, because on day three, I got really, really weepy, and I was so sad, and it was a vulnerability. I was like, oh, I'm so exposed, I'm asking people, they don't even know the book, why should they support me, or why haven't they supported me? <laughs> like, you know me, like, are you not going to? And I realized that it was just, I was so raw, and I looked at every, campaign that I've never supported. I went and bought some, gave some money to someone's ear that week. I, I bought, I bought some like, for circus tickets that arrived here, so I was like, where are these from? Every, every single campaign that I could support, I realized, and all the ones that I didn't, I phoned and said, I'm really sorry I never supported your campaign. Because I understand that what you're doing, you're putting yourself out there. So I made 18,000 Rand on the campaign, which is amazing, in pre-sales, which meant I sold about 40 books before it was published. Yeah. And it is amazing, and it is, I mean, that's like, why are you gonna take a chance on me? Thank you for believing in me, like really, before I did. Yeah. Yes, and Todd. Hi, Crystal, Hi. well done. Yes. Not to take away from this auspicious occasion, <laughs> but do you have another book in you? <laughs> Yeah, that is a good question. Um, I think I do, and I think that if you want to be an author, respected, you have to have another book. So I have had a very difficult um, second, after the whole thing and falling in love, I had a very tricky divorce. Okay, I'm not divorced, I was already divorced, but a tricky court case and a whole system with my ex, um, my ex-husband. And it was very difficult as a whole, it was a very sticky thing and I think that if I wrote about that it could also help people go through the process because I was also looking for the book when I was going through it, like um, I, was, I was actually, I mean, overshare us, but I was sued for parental alienation, I'll put it out there, you can read the book to find out more. <laughs> so I think that it was, it was, a, it was a whole big journey and I think that um, in my experience I could, um, yeah, I think I could help people, but I'll see if it comes through me, just one day, so. Yeah. I think the cool opportunity here is also for people to, as they read the book and, and see your vulnerability, hopefully that will spark vulnerability within them and communicating with each other. I think communities such as this and support that we have here tonight is exactly that kind of space where once one person goes, the rest will follow and hopefully you can inspire a, a lot of healing processes for a lot of people who need to talk about it. Can I, yeah, I've actually got something very important to say about that. So my nanny, who's not here, she's been with me before Layla was born. Um, she's running in the book, so I wish she was here, but anyway, she's not here. And I was reading my book to her as I was going along. So I'd read it and she'd get, so we'd have reading sessions. So I'd read her extracts and she'd, oh my God, miss, and she'd come and sit in the chair and I'd read it to her and she's like an amazing audience. And she was going back to her community and telling her friends. Now, people in these communities aren't exposed to self-help books and to therapy and all that stuff. And she was telling her friends and they were leaving their husbands realizing that they're in an abusive relationship or that their relationship isn't good enough for, for them. And I was like, this is amazing. She came back and said, Miss, I spoke to so-and-so and she's left her husband. And I'm like, people need this. They need to know, like, where's the guidance? We're not taught that stuff. So it was quite profound. And it was like, they are, it's community. It's, it's amazing. Crystal, there are a lot of men out here. They're gonna hope you aren't gonna to speak to their wives in the next couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> any, any other questions out there? There have to be a few. <laughs> the frog wants to say something. No, he's just warming up, trying to cool down. Any, anything else? I have one. Yes. yes. Okay. Who was the most difficult frog to write about? Who was the, the, the most difficult frog to talk about? This could be interesting. It is interesting, but it's in a book. It's not going to be the answer that you think. It's actually this guy over here. Yeah, <laughs> because the rest is history and this is current. And it was it is current stuff that I was facing. And also having to go through and knowing that if I'm going through a bit of jealousy that I'd have to meet one of his friends and, and relive it. And also to respect him and protect him. And also that a lot of, I mean, it's our current life that we're writing about. 
So that was it. The rest was um, like fun. It was probably that guy over there was probably the fun, the funnest one, um, because it was just yeah. <laughs> and you can see he's a fun guy. So it was yeah. So the difficult one was definitely the current one, and I and I put it off for quite some time. The other one was also the father of uh, my children, and I, I was respectful that he is the father. So I was cautious about that, and also there was like a few incidences that happened, and it was difficult. And I knew there's one incident that something happened. I knew that I was going to have to go through that again, and it did come up. Life sent me that, so I could remember everything. But um, yeah, so it, they all, but definitely Kiko. <laughs> Good one, Kiko. Anyone else? I think I think um, I think we can kind of close off on that. And um, there, there are a couple of things that we all need to do now. We need to firstly read. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't look at the agenda very well. Are you looking to be quite disappointed? Like you forgot that. Can you come read? Yes. That's a super idea. I was also actually, yes, super idea. I also think the audio book. She must please read it so I can listen to it too because reading not so good. Hello, I'm Debbie. I'm Crystal's sister. <laughs> I'm going to read an extract from the book. I decided to love him blindly anyway. After a week of being insep inseparable, seeing each other every night and every day, I received a phone call from him. At first, the line was quite muffled, and I thought I was hearing things. I'm calling you from the Fisher prison. What? The line cleared, and it was undeniable. I'm calling you from the Fisher prison. I took a second to compose a suitable reply. What the fuck, I spat out. <laughs> There's been a huge misunderstanding, he said. With surprising calmness, Steve and I have been arrested for kidnapping. What? What? I shrieked. Calm down, babe. Please don't worry about me or your car. I... My car? <laughs> I was driving your car when we got arrested. We'll both be released in the morning, he assured me. How can happily ever after fall apart so soon? My knight in shining armor is in jail, and my car is in the pound. This kind of thing does not happen to me. I'm an estate agent with an impeccable reputation. I live my life in the public eye. We do things above board, not against the law. Wow. <laughs> I don't know why I'm suspecting, but I think there's a fugitive in a, in a frog suit running around that's escaped from Fisher Prison. But um, guys, any other questions? There's some good ones coming now. I like, I like these. There must be a couple more questions out there. Are we going to end on that? Yes, there's another question. Um, ideas for your next book, because I'm sure this one will be very successful. You'll have to write the next one. Do you think you would still share your own story? Maybe you have any ideas? Wow, thank you for the vote of confidence because it sounds like this is a this is probably what happens to authors. Like you write one and you think I've just achieved my life goal and then they're like, Where's the next one? <laughs> I'm like, Okay, it's just been four days since on the show. Um, I I actually I have thought about that and I thought maybe I could try my hand at fiction. But I think that there has to be authenticity to sell a book. So I'm pretty convinced at this stage that anyone that's ever written a fiction book is writing about their own life in disguise. And I think it would be easier just to write a true story because I don't know where, I'm, I'm still am not a writer. I feel that this book has just been spat out. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know at this stage, but more likely to real. But then it's also you following what you did. So, I mean, I don't know. I actually don't know how to answer that yet. But thank you for the question. Can we, Crystal, can we get it on Amazon Kindle? Yes, we can. Oh, right. is it really it done? Done? I think the next question is where is it all available? And then obviously how do we continue to support, I think, is, yeah. is, is, is the next question. Only buy on Kindle. Okay, so it is on Amazon Kindle. 
and um, you can yeah you can get it. If you do, please go to Goodreads and leave a review, but only if it's a good one. Yeah. For now, for now, I expect some bad ones later, but not amongst my my close circle. Yeah. <laughs> and then it is in Wordsworth on the front shelf. So if anyone doesn't want to buy now, it'd be amazing if someone went and bought there. So they just know, yeah, Long Beach Mall. So they just know, oh, there is something here because I went up, I went to them and said, you haven't got my books, <laughs> and they're like, what, what book? And then they looked and they saw in the system that it wasn't there, and they said, oh, good, gosh, and I said, I'm doing my launch. They said, why don't you do it here? So they said, can you get us some books? And I did, and I rushed them in there, and they were so, and she said, thank you, you've made, you saved me the embarrassment, and I was like, you saved me the embarrassment. <laughs> So they're on the front cover, on the front shelf at um, at Wordsworth in our mall, and there's a poster behind, and just one of you buy things instead of yeah, <laughs> just so they can say, oh, it wasn't where, the, yeah, oh, she is someone. <laughs> I think we're building some momentum here. There are more questions out there. If thrust that hand up and, and go for it. I, I just have a, yes. a thought rather than a share it with us. I think. You guys have there mentioned something about you know, people that don't have access to, to books yeah. and um, like from communities, if you argue. Yeah. And I just think that there's so much value that could be added um, to have people that have very really tough relationships with, um, with a lot of abuse uh, in their relationships. If there were a way that, that the book could be translated <coughs> and be made available perhaps digitally to like those communities, that might be something that's quite special. I think that's that's a, that's a great point, and, I, and 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 leading off of that, our obvious support within communities, within people that we know, uh, people who are involved in our lives, who who are, and we're going to go back to this. Who who is this? suitable or not suitable for from an age perspective there are a lot of young girls that that we come across all the time no what what, what do you feel would you let your, your children read it or what's it all about i thought i'd let my children read it until one of them tried to read it yeah. <laughs> and mom she, she you, you you what did she say you neglected me and i'm like i did not and she said you did you did, there's a, there's, I don't want to give anything away, but there's a part in there, and, 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 she, and I had to like do it. I had to give my mom and I'm like, mom, did I neglect her? She's like, no, you didn't. So it's, and it's, it is definitely an adult content book, but I do think that anyone that is in a relationship, anyone that wants to be in a relationship, anyone that has had abuse in a relationship, anyone wondering if it's the right relationship for them, or anyone wondering if it's not the right, I think it's a highly relatable subject. I have had men read it from beginning to end, um, and I don't think they thought they would, but they, they got stuck in because I think they're identifying with the men in the book. So, although it's got a bright pink cover, um, don't let that put you off. Get it on Kindle, maybe, then no one can see. <laughs> but, um, good. Good. But, uh, but I have actually had people of all age groups from 19 to in their 70s relating and sharing their story and going, oh my gosh, this happened to me, this is happening to me. So I think that it's actually just, I mean, anyone that's been in a relationship before, I guess. Awesome. I think it, that that could be the start point of this next book. Might be people being able to share their stories in a in a, in, a, in a space where they might not physically tell it themselves, but be able to share their stories and experiences as well. Anyone else? No. Okay. Well, guys, thanks very very much for so intently listening, for politely laughing, and for get, for being engaged and for all the cool questions. Crystal, again. Thanks so much for your vulnerability. Thanks so much for inviting us here tonight. Thanks very much for this mirror that you put on your life and, and willingness to expose yourself to help those people around you. And it's, it, it, it is something that's incredibly special. And, and I know from, from our perspective, we respect you massively for, for the courage to, of, of doing that. So well done. And the author is available afterwards to sign uh, autographs of the book, so please don't leave without one. Unfortunately, this isn't Oprah, and we aren't getting all one to take home. But uh, so please just don't, don't leave without getting one. And over to Crystal to finish things off. Okay, so dear people of my community, thank you so much for the love and the support. It's overwhelming. I've never been to a book signing before and by things of things by the sound of things neither have many of you. <laughs> this is all new for us. 
together. So, I mean, thank you from everyone. I've got a whole table of estate agents there and bond consultants, and I see my brother's even on this at the estate agent table. But um, there's a family table. But I'm, I'm just, yeah. so, so, the first thank you is to Ifka, which your name has come up, but I, I, I hope you know how much you've helped me. And I really, really don't think that there would be a book without you because you gave me the confidence to even send it to the editor, which I wouldn't have before. So, thank you. Round of applause for Ifka. One of the reasons that book is where it is, is that you had three things. You had courage, you had perseverance, and you had clarity of thought in it. Wow. And I think those three things carried you right through. And you never ever lost confidence in what you were trying to portray. It was beautiful. And I think you deserve this moment more than just this moment. You've done a wonderful job. And I agree that your second book could really look at abusive relationships, stories of other people. There are lots in this country. I thought of that. Kathy, my proofreader, who's here. I remember to invite her, but I forgot about the editor. Thank you. Where is where is Kathy? I can't see you. Oh, there you are. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you for all your input along the way. And I'm just warning you that when you do open it and you're not there as the proofreader, the staging post people took over and said there's only one name here and it is hers, but yours is in the back. Thank you. And yeah, from thank you very much. And then there's all the Thunder Fun supporters that, um, yeah, thank you very much for all your support, your blind support, and I've got no greater pleasure than handing you your books. They're all signed. There's a little frog there. There are frogs that go with the first sales as long as, as, long as stocks may last. So anyone that buys now will get a free frog. Um, and the big, the big guy, <laughs> that one. Kiko, you're amazing. You're amazing. Thank you, and I love you. And thank you for giving me the clarity to write the book, because I wouldn't be able to. None of it made sense until I met you. This was just garbled stuff, but now it all makes sense. So thank you. And then my family, um, the little ones, the two daughters, my lovely little girls. Thank you. You're everything to me. You know that. Where's the big one? I love you. My little tadpoles. <laughs> and then. Um, and then my, my immediate, my, my mom and dad, and my brothers and sisters, my, and Aura, and Mary Ann, and Debbie, and Vicky. Oh my God, we've got a big family. This is really exposing us. Jay, dad, the, okay, but they're the family. And then Phil for being the most magnificent host, like, oh my word. He had to import him from over the mountain. Okay, what a natural. Mary Ann, Aura, thank you, Fiona, for the most beautiful music. Thank you very much to the Cafe Roo and to the frog. <laughs> you got big balls. <laughs> you can read the book to find out if that's true. 